and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 332. I am your host, Norman Sancho. Joining us today is Doc Charlie. Hi. Hi, hi, Norman. How are you? Hey, man. I had trouble, seriously, just trying to think of a name for you. <laughs> it's not really think of a name for you. It's just like trying to remember, okay, what should I call you? Should I use the doctor or not? Because you're kind of a doctor. <laughs> and yeah, you know what? <laughs> Topsy Derby. How are you, man? It's been a while. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I've been, uh, I've been fine working on the PSP. Oh. And, uh, I've Ah, nice, nice. Because uh, two weeks ago, we had Dan, and he was doing his own con. So it's like, hmm, that's awesome. Like, we have two cons in Southeast Asia. That, that was awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, Fiesta Sifone Con. Can't wait for it, actually. Yeah, like, what, this next month? And uh, mm. near the end of the month, so that's cool because, well, uh, listeners know that by the end of the month, it is almost my birthday, so yay! Yay! <laughs> so, but the sad part is, like, uh, by the time my birthday comes along, TFE's done, try not TFE, uh, TFE's haven't come yet, it's uh, Siponicon, yeah, Siponicon will be done, yeah. so yeah, sad life. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. So we got a guest friend, it's your birthday? Oh no, I told people, if you want to know, it'll be the 29th. Ah, cool. Alright, awesome. Hang on, uh, 29th? Yeah, yeah, it's after. Mm-hmm. But anywho, but anywho, uh, not, let's not dilly dally and let's head into the news. Sorry folks for being redundant, because uh, this week's news is going to be, well, all about Netflix and the uh, hey that they're doing. So, hmm. last week we mentioned that by the end of the month, uh, Netflix will be taking ponies down, and it seems that all seasons are done except three and four. Uh, we don't really know why. Probably it's something to do with their contract and whatnot. And then it seems that they're putting it back up because season one, two, four are there. And yeah, like this whole thing is just nuts. Like I got no idea why this is happening. Okay, I do have a question regarding Netflix per se. Would you say it's a very popular medium in the US where there are lots and lots of viewers? Oh yeah, Netflix is kind of, how do I put this, uh, it's the cable provider killer, but it's not the definite killer because people still want their ESPN and want their HBO and whatnot. But uh, those channels have their own apps now, but I don't know, it's like if you get a cable box or uh, in our scenario here, if we get our Astro, they have their own bundle thing you know what i mean mm, 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 mm. i get it i get it yeah so the states have that too and yeah netflix is kind of cutting into that slice of the pie but i won't say not really it's depends um netflix have things where it comes and goes for example like this pony thing but somehow it's not really going no i think that netflix it's a very uh, easy to use platform i would say yeah, and maybe that's a main the big appeal. So that's why it's a big deal. If it's uh, if it's pony is getting cut from Netflix, then we're gonna lose a lot of uh, audiences. If you know potential new audiences get removed. True, but reading through the news here, uh, Netflix will be removing the date on September fifteen. So this is just hmm. unstable. Like, what are they doing? It's like a love hate relationship. I think there's something under the hood that they're not telling us. Uh, probably some internal issues which they haven't properly sorted out. I think I think there's some somebody inside who's not communicating. Like maybe the upper ups are not telling the person who's supposed to execute the uh, order oh, properly. Yeah, true that. True that. Probably got this, and then you know nobody knows what's going on. Yeah, but still, um, for you guys at home who want to watch ponies, there's always iTunes. You can always buy that set it's available there so yay mm, yay the ponies yep yep so yeah like i said i'm sorry for the redundant news because all three of our new selection are all on netflix i tried looking for other news on eqd but i couldn't find anything uh, sorry about that but uh that doesn't mean we don't have anything to fill out the slot we have doc here and, well, Doc mentioned something about the Friendship Express 3. That's right. The Friendship Express. It's coming back for the third installment this year in uh, November 17th and 18th. It'll be two days long. 
it will be well a pony con so activities uh, as you would expect in the pony con like panels yeah it'll be artists drawing stuff it'll be vendors selling stuff and uh yes uh will we have a guest of honor ah that's a that's a good question oh uh, yeah like people have been wondering about that yeah what do you think norman from what i heard you might be getting this one podcaster there like i i heard he has this show and why not he'll be also ah. at, <laughs> he'll also be uh, at c pony con uh, i'm not 100 yeah, yeah. sure I, that's why i heard rumors yeah the rumors of the community <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> I heard that rumor too, long, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I heard his show is already more than three hundred episodes long, eh? Yeah, yeah. Like what? Three thirty-two now? <laughs> oh, I'll be more, I'll be more than that next week. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So, um, okay, but in seriousness, um, will you be having a which I'm gonna call this guest of honor because, like previous two cons, uh, you had Vincent Tong, and you had Michelle yeah. Kreber and gate black different that's brown that's so yeah, yeah, that's right. what about this year is it still hush hush or can you say anything about it i would say it's still under wraps at the moment we are working on something it is quite likely but i cannot say anything publicly to confirm it right now uh, right. Um, so, yeah. we would love to have a guest of honor but uh, if in the event that we uh, don't have one uh, we'll definitely have community guests coming there. Ah. plenty of artists coming so that's the good part i can say yeah, sure. Because let's look at um. Jo- all joking aside, besides me, there are some other amazing artists like uh, Celine Chirpy Chirp. She is amazing in her art, and I have to say this every time when I go to a convention that has her work, I always drop my money on to her. Like here, take my money, and I give me your art. I, I want it. Yeah, Chirpichi. He's a great convention artist. He made our poster, by the way. <laughs> nice. And also Chi. What was it? Chiwa Mikoto. Hmm. Yeah. I'm. Well, I'm not sure regarding her uh, attendance this yeah. year. So I mean, if yeah, let's just hope she comes. Even if she's not a panelist or whatever it is, she'll be there. She'll be still having fun. Probably she'll be on a table drawing something. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And trust me, there will be other people there, even if they're not big name in the pony world. I'm sure they're big name in the local Malaysia brony group. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There will be people there like Aaron, Winston, <laughs> mm-hmm. and so on. You know who you are. <laughs> I I heard there will be a few people coming in costumes as well, a few cosplayers as well. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. I have good hopes. I have good hopes. We might be a small community, but uh, if we can jam pack everything into one fun event for for two days, that's that's good enough. That's our goal. Nice, nice. But anywho, so um, we've been talking about the con itself and whatnot. But what about locations, man? Like, where is this place? Right, so uh, the convention is happening at a place called Work Grounds. That's the venue inside a mall. And the mall's name is Sunway uh, Geo Avenue. Uh, quite an easily accessible mall. You can use the bus uh, rapid transit or BRT uh, to get to the mall directly. And uh, if you need to get to the BRT, uh, usually you can take public transport like the train. We recommend use the train. Or if all else fails, you can use uh, right share services, that is the Grab car. Uh, right, right, right. And say for locals, if the locals want to drive it, uh, parking is not an issue. The mall has got lots and lots of parking at the uh, at, at the area over there. So no issues for own parking. All right, that's good because, well, if you're local, you should be able to drive around. And yeah, the place looks cool. And yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lot of hotels for people who are of towners. So yay, uh, just well, book something early, I guess. I would say that the Sunway area is kind of like a touristy destination, mainly because of the Sunway Lagoon Park. Mm-hmm. But definitely uh, finding accommodation around the area, Sunway hotels and you know those motels, cheaper accommodations. It shouldn't be a problem around this area. I'm sure you can find something. True, 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 true. Um, I'm looking at their website now and I'm looking at the event space and it looks, uh, well, how to put this? You mentioned to me earlier it was smaller than the two TFEs and yeah, I, I'm mm. looking at this and it is smaller but 
it's not bad. It's like very private or very personal. Yep, you can take a look uh, over there. The the area is kind of like a smaller enclosed uh, four wall area, but we are getting two floors. So yes, it's smaller compared to the previous TFEs in 2015 and 2016, but uh, we we have a more compact area and uh, across two floors. So I believe it's you know cozy and uh, it'll, it'll be more personal this round rather than you know very open and everybody's all around. I think this is keeping in line with um, how old we are because, uh, well, with all due respect, we are a uh, sunset fandom. <laughs> <laughs> I see what so, you did there. Yeah, we are a sunset fandom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to off topic a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you heard that the Bronicon is uh, coming to its last convention in 2019. Yeah, that, that, uh, that news was pretty sad on me. Like, I, I need to go before it closes down. Like, you know, uh, do one of those things on the bucket list, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's only like, it's like you only get one year before it changes. I mean, BronyCon will probably still have a con, but it just won't be BronyCon. Yeah. It'll be some other con. So next year is the year. But anyway, the point I'm trying to say is that uh, it, the biggest uh, pony convention in the fandom is going to close down next year. This is already a sign which means that we are uh, you know, we are not really going up upwards. We're not growing. So uh, I think it makes sense to have um, future conventions scaled down rather than being scaled up. Mm, that makes sense. So the venue I'm looking is is very personal, very private and whatnot. Like I, I can see a lot of good ideas here because uh, for me personally, when I remember doing uh, conventions and whatnot, like uh, doing panels, it was mm-hmm. very, how do I put this? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Daunting? Because of how huh. huge the room is, and you get to see, like, oh my god, this is just all the people here. Oh no, I I feel very. What's the word I'm looking for again? <laughs> uh, traumatized. So, I don't know. It's like a lot of words that we can't think of right now. Stage fright. Is it? We got like a bit of stage fright seeing yeah, how big yeah, the place yeah. is. Yeah, and this one is like okay. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a smaller place, so yeah, probably little people. There'll be people, but it's more personal. I I don't need to project my voice like i can just talk normally and people can hear me yeah that's right um there will be a pa system and there will be like a stage area but uh, at the end of the day you're gonna feel like it's a small lecture hall kind of feel so definitely more cozy and more compact nothing to worry about or, or less to worry about is uh, stage fright stuff so. oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's true that's true if you have stage fright then that's not helping but hey we're, we've been used to this for now. Like what? We've been doing this for almost, what, seven years? No. The show's been on for season eight. Yeah, seven years. I was right the first time around. Hey. Yep. We are in this boat for a very long time. Yeah. So it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So, okay. Uh, you mentioned this place is going to be in a mall or something like that. So what mm-hmm. about food? Like, how's that going to be? Okay, because it's in a mall, obviously you can find food within the mall. Uh, it would be a little bit pricey, but uh, if let's say you're willing to travel a bit, like uh, take the uh, take the bus or even take a walk, there are a variety of other options around the area. I heard I heard there's a good food court uh, just down the road. Definitely uh, more towards the student price range. So um, maybe you can get a meal for like. Five or six, six ringgit, uh, that would be better than your restaurant and mall food, true, which true. typically will go over the 10 ringgit line. Oh, yeah. So, true. yes, if you want to say, you definitely uh, take a look around the uh, surrounding uh, areas. Oh. Sunway is a nice place. It is a bit touristy, but uh, definitely, uh, how do you say, uh, student friendly because there's even a there's even a university nearby. <laughs> nice. All right. Because, okay, Um, I'm seeing this one picture on the Workground website. And mm. I mm. see that they have food there. Is that what? Uh, complimentary or? Uh, okay, great, great. That's a very good point. So, uh, yes, there's actually a pantry on both floors, the top and bottom. A little bit expensive according to the um, hmm, workers over there. Even the workers say that it's expensive. Mm. But here's the thing. Uh. We, the convention organizers, are thinking of actually um, 
putting up our own snacks, which would be a little bit cheaper than uh, the, what, what, what the place has to offer. Uh-huh. So uh, all this is what we want to do. If the event goes through, um, then, you, then attendees will have two options uh, within the venue itself, either to buy the snacks uh, directly from the uh, co-working space or buy from us, which, uh, you know, we have some ideas because right. we have a student wants to. So we know how it feels to not being able to afford expensive meals. And since that we have experience running conventions, we know what will make good convention food. Yeah, sandwiches and noodles <laughs> and bowl of ramen. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> and also fried rice. <laughs> have you have you heard of onigiri? onigiri. The rice bowl? Yeah, those rice bowls yeah. are fun. <laughs> Yeah, those no, no, are great conventions. So, wait, 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 those things are called donuts, according to Pokemon. Donuts? <laughs> fine, 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 donuts, whatever. But yeah, those are terrific convention foods because, you know, if you're at the con, you want to be with people, you want to take a look at the stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, just grab something that is um, fulfilling and uh, easy to eat. True, so true. Onigiri is one of the options. And the other options is like sandwiches, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes we might uh, provide and offer attendees an option to stay around a bit longer. Uh, but what you really need, right, is bottled water, like one of those, uh, what you call this, 500 millimeter bottles. Like, yeah, you just need to have that, man. Like, I remember the past few uh, cons or events that we hosted, especially the MBS show, what, um, anniversary? Uh, I forgot what anniversary we did. Like, I, I was tapped out. Like, I was thirsty. Everybody was, yeah. Yeah. I remember that part, yeah. That part was like, because the weather was really hot. Yeah. For this, uh, one thing is indoors, so uh, less chance of dehydration. But you're right, we do need the water. Thankfully, the co-working space itself has water coolers for us to use. So you can just grab a glass of cold water over there. And uh, of course, for convention, we will also prepare our own uh, bottles extra. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, we got to have that, man. Like, especially if your guests are coming down, they need avians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, good thing you pointed out. It's a, uh, it's a good, it's a good uh, step in the in in the convention organizing scene that you must prepare uh, the basic necessities mm. for people. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. though said location is in a mall, okay, you have the option to go out and grab a bottle of Coke if you want to. That's your choice. Mm-hmm. But some people, mm-hmm. like especially the guests, they probably want water. Like they'll be talking up on stage and they might want something to drink because, hey, I'm thirsty. So besides the location being small, food is there. Well, what are you planning? Like, what what else are you going to have there? Like, besides, well, um, probably special guests being there, um, panelists and whatnot. Like, what, what are you going to have there? Okay, vendors. Definitely vendors. Uh, we do not have a lot of space, but we, at this point, I can safely say that we are, we are quite filled up on... Uh, a vendor application. So the stuff that uh, you're going to see at the vendor booths, they're going to be awesome. Mm. Like people are going to bring cool stuff. Nice. That's for sure. Nice. Uh, activity wise, of course, we'll be having games. Um, well, you know, party games <laughs> where you can play with friends. And also the pony related games where, you know, you can play pony games with pony friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember back in the days, uh, there were the pop quizzes. That, that was fun, man. Like, mm-hmm. uh, what you call this? Uh, I remember the table where you, you got to answer quizzes and get stamps. Oh, are you going to do treasure hunts like that? Like uh, the stamps thing? You're talking about the scavenger hunt back in 2006. Yeah, actually, we did it for both years, 2015 and 2016. Yeah, unfortunately for this year, uh, there are no plans to make a scavenger hunt. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, how you say it is? It is done. Mm-hmm. So uh, we we'll probably we we'll probably do some other activities, more more group orientated activities uh... where people can sit at the table, you know. And we're trying to encourage art as well. So if um, <clears throat> there will be a whiteboard, mm-hmm. uh, similar to the previous event where you know people can take a marker and just draw whatever they want on the board. Usually we fill it up with ponies, mm-hmm. and then uh, there will be tables where people can sit down, chit chat. And uh, we'll, prob- we'll probably pro- provide some uh, basic art materials as well so that people can draw. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> to come in the future, we are going to open up um, commission booths, which is uh, something like a vendor booth, but it's a smaller version of it. Only for artists? 
yes, it's more geared towards artists. Uh, so you imagine like a proper vendor space where people want to sell their merchandise. Uh, that will be large. And then um, on the upstairs will be a smaller friend or rather commi artist commission slot where they will have a small area where they can do live commission and uh, maybe even sell some merchandise by, by, by the small side table. Oh, okay, so... Basically, these will be people who are uh, attendees opening up? Uh, actually, it's also under vendor applications, but we just haven't uh, we haven't announced it yet. Ah. It's going to be real soon, but it is confirmed. So uh, if you look at the website, the website says, I believe uh, there's only three slots for vendors. Uh, they've all filled up already. So that's going to close. And what's going to open is uh, the, like a mini vendor slot which uh, is more towards geared towards artist commission. Uh, all right, all right. So, well, uh, is, is the vendor booth done? Like, is there no more slot? It's filled up already. So, uh, <laughs> I would say that there is no more slots oh, for right. new vendors. All right. So, basically, yeah. you need to, um, on the website, which is the ponycon.my website, you, you need yeah. to uh, close that, man. <laughs> It's www.ponycon.my. Very easy to remember. So yeah, the, the, you know, not not as long as the previous one, and it kind of rolls off the tongue easy, easily, uh, more easily as well. True, 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 true. So okay, uh, we we talk about vendors, um, panelists, and whatnot. So okay, uh, panelists, how many people you have? Uh, do you have there, man? Hmm. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> It is a bit too early to actually count. Uh, it's still ongoing. It's still open. We are hoping that the uh, public would apply. As for the numbers, I really cannot say because it's up to you guys. It's up to the audience. Like, how many of you guys want to come and do a panel? Or how many of you guys actually know what a panel is? <laughs> and of course, uh, for this application, we welcome as many as we can hold. Uh, there is never once where we had too many. There's always like, you know, we are looking for more. So yeah, that's that's about all I have to say regarding the panelist application. Come come apply, go to the website. Yeah, it's uh, it's open. It's open. Just click on the apply button where okay. under the panelist section. All right. So same goes for volunteers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So what are you looking for? Like, uh, what kind of panelists are you looking for? Because besides uh, the MBS show and what we do, uh, we already set. Like, we kind of have an idea. So yay. But what do you like? What would you like? Like, do you like artists, musicians, or probably some uh, unknown thing yet? Like, uh, maybe cosplay? Probably? Well, uh, music is definitely on my list. I would like to see people come and apply to play music. Uh, I have, um, actually, I do have a few friends from overseas who might be interested. If it works out, uh, we might see some. Uh, musicians come in and uh of course uh, um daniel as well <laughs> we shall see regarding that part and uh, what are what other things if somebody has got a unique idea or want to present uh, their own ideas out on stage that would be nice as well but i do not know what to expect because basically a panel can be can be anything the, the range is so wide if there's something unique that would be great but uh, if it's uh, music uh, or even a simple pop quicks, that's great as well. Mm. Oh, you know what? People at home, uh, you could do a game show. That'll be fun. A pony-oriented game show with prizes and whatnot. Yeah, like, I know a few of you guys out there who are very up-to-date and whatnot with the pony stuff and pony memes. So probably do that. Like, that'll be fun. Mm. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if people apply, yeah, if people apply via the forms, then we can have a look at what their idea is. If it's in line with the convention, no issues, then we'll be glad to have it on the on the agenda. Yeah, just imagine being up on stage talking to people. It's like, hey, folks, this is the panel for game show. Yay! Now, which pony is best pony? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> yeah, Fluttershy is best pwn. 
Mm. Speaking of the best pony, mm. uh, we are doing a little something of a poll with the tickets this year. Ah. So we are trying to team um, the ticket to your favorite pony. So, like, let's say you pick up the ticket at the entrance. Uh, we're going to ask you who's your favorite pony, and then um, your ticket will reflect your choice. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that you, you did that previously with the pony stamps. Yes, we did it with the pony stamps last time. <laughs> yeah, so now it's the ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Speaking of tickets, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but the applications or, sorry, registrations can be done online uh, via the website, but the physical ticket will be have to be uh, picked up uh, at the entrance. Well, basically, if you go into the con, you're going to pick up those tickets. So, yeah, that makes sense. And how much are the tickets, by the way? Yep, that was my next thing. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to make a little fact uh, sheet over here. Let's see. Hmm. In 2015, it was free. All right. In 2017, it was uh, 7 bucks. Oh. And in 2017, we did not have a con because we made way for Sea Pony Con. Mm-hmm. And this year, 2018, uh, it's uh, 10 ringgit. Ah. So a little bit high. Yeah, because yes. of the SSD. But still cheaper than your... <laughs> yes, but it's still cheaper than any other convention like you know, Comic Fiesta, any manga key. We, we are still cheaper than that. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> we are kind of a small con. Uh, here's the thing, I do hope that uh, even though the Brony fandom is slowing down, uh, I do hope that there'll mm. be a TFE 2018 just because of the, uh, what you call this, uh, reception for this one like I hope a lot of people will come oh. a lot of people will like it and a lot of people will be asking for a fourth one and then yeah oh <laughs> yes yes that's yeah, that's very nice of you to say I hope so too <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll see how it goes mm-hmm. but here's also another thing Um, uh, <laughs> people who think that oh no yeah uh, people who just con things they're, they're getting big bucks oh no Oh no. No, 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 no. We're not doing it for profit. No. Really. They'll be lucky if um, they broke even. Yeah, that's right. It's it's never it's never a profiting uh endeavor activity. Yeah. Unless you're overseas. Uh, um, I heard BronyCon broke even. <laughs> those guys well those guys are on a whole different level, but um it's not easy to make money out of a convention yeah. especially if you're yeah you know you're not getting sponsors mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so if you look at uh, bigger events they are sponsored by big corporations and that, that's where they get their funds and whatnot and it's for a mini convention that has got zero sponsors well you do the math and think about stuff like the cost for printing the cost for renting yeah mm-hmm. you will not you will not be able to make a profit yeah. based on a small convention. Yeah, like what, yeah. your first year was free? So, <laughs> oh gosh. And, uh, okay, so next we'll probably talk a bit about charity work. Ah, yes. Uh, Back in 2015, I think there was no charity supported. But in 2016, we did uh, two, two bodies, uh, SPCA and uh, NCSM. Yeah, I remember that. I, I was involved with that one. Like, that was fun. We, we supported two organizations. This year, we're probably going to do something related to kids, um, orphanages. Mm. We are still in the works, um, but we are most likely going to involve uh, orphanages somehow for, for this convention. Just, just keep an eye on our website. Uh, updates will be posted there, as well as the Twitter and yeah, we've got a whole bunch of other yeah, Facebooks. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Twitter, Facebook. You can also join Discord. Like, uh, you guys are sharing with C Pony Cons things. Yep, that's right. The little Discord server where you want instant messages. You know, people are saying ditch Skype and uh, Teamspeak. Come to this. Oh, they they say that they say that, but suddenly when Discord kind of break down or sucks, you hey you, you go to Skype. Yeah, let's go back. To- Right. Yeah, let's go back to Skype, man. <laughs> this card is being buggy. It has happened before. <laughs> oh, I, I, I know, I know. I've been there before, man. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I do hope that you guys um, get the charity thing going. So, wait, um, this year, what's the plan? Like, uh, two years ago, it was buy plush for charity. Uh, what about this year? 
Unsure. Unsure. I really can't tell you that because I don't know know it myself. <laughs> <laughs> the the organization that we've uh, picked is Orphanages, but we haven't actually have a name for it yet. So uh, somewhere closer towards the convention date, then uh, look out for our announcements. All right. All right. Uh, we're gonna be announcing, you know, uh, this charity. We are gonna announce our mini uh, vendor opening and closing of the big vendors mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully a guest of honor as mentioned earlier so as long as you're update i mean if you're like subscribed to us or following us on twitter then the updates will come to you then you won't be left out join one of the social icon icons in the on the website that there's a twitter there's a facebook uh, and there's a what's that discord and yeah there's also a youtube <laughs> That's a Tumblr too. Yeah, it's Rosa Rosa's Tumblr, our our mascot's Tumblr. Yeah, Rosa's Tumblr. That's cool, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of ours here. That is being maintained by Chirpichi, the owner of uh, Rosa. So whenever new art comes in, she will hoard them like a dragon and uh, she will post them up. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's what she told me. So she can hoard them, hoard them like a dragon. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh... It's no joke, man. Like I'm, I'm looking at the Rosa Tumblr, and it's something to check out. Like it's really fun. Art of Rosa, you know that it exists. She's pretty well liked by the uh, community. <laughs> yeah, she she looks cute. So okay, let's see. You got the Tumblrs, you got the Twitter, the Facebook, the YouTube, and the Discord. So yeah, if you would like to keep up to date with the Friendship Express, you can well go to their website www.punicon.my uh, over there will be all the info you need and also you can pre-book your ticket on the same place just go to the bottom buy ticket online and yeah you're good tendering it for two days i see that's a steal yes for both days that's right also i probably have to mention if you are if you, if you, are, if you have a kid less than 12 years old it's free entry see more value what else can i say like um, I think what the Friendship Express was was, was my first pony convention, was it? No, sorry. Yeah, it's like it was my first local pony convention, and I enjoyed it. Like it was fun. And this year, like, I I'm gonna go there and support it, and yeah, I'm just gonna have fun. Yay! Can't wait for it, Norman. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Like it's what it's like. What? Uh, let me double check here. Like sixty nine days, one hour and fifty four minutes. Yep, we have got to come down at the uh, website. So it's a very convenient place where you can see, oh, okay, we've got oh, 69 more days before the car. It's, it's cool. It's getting closer. Yeah, it's getting closer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so um, we, we don't really get many con people around. So how's the pressure, man? Like, you, you're feeling the pressure already? Con people? Oh, my. <laughs> uh, not really, actually. This time around, I think it's much more organized and much more... Uh, Hand out compared to the first two years. Like, if you talk about the first year, it was total chaos. You have half the time, you have no idea what you're doing and you've got good people helping you out. So, friends are important and uh, people who have actually run uh, the convention business before, they are important because you get their advice from them. Then the second year, you get a little bit better and things are not so hectic and you try to improve on your uh, previous ideas. Mm -hmm. And then I would say uh, subsequently that you know, now is the third year you, when you have seen what you've done previously and hopefully you've gone to other uh, conventions and look at how they've done it. You get the idea and you feel more confident that you're doing it right and everything is going to be okay. Everybody's going to have fun. We're just in it together, you know. We are, we are, we are in it for friendship. Yeah, yeah. Friendship is magic. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So, yeah, all I can say is if you get a chance to come around to TFE, do so. I'll be there. You, you'll see me around. Probably I'll be wearing the NBA show t-shirt. And I'll mm -hmm. do stuff like talk to you. <laughs> and just, uh, I probably just shout out because there are not many local conventions. If you do have the time, go to Fiesta C Ponycon in Singapore as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, happening uh, before us in October. Uh, TIP is in November, so you know you have a choice between two conventions to go to. 
can make it for both, by all means, please make it for both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, Doc, there's no choice here. You have to go to both. Mm. Mm, yes, if you're local and if, if you can, you have to go to both. That's that's absolutely the right mentality. I like that. Yeah, okay. like I'll be going to both. Like if you can't get enough of me, go to both. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, boys. But yeah, uh, well, that, that's about it, I guess. Uh, is there anything more you want to tell the audience? We probably covered a lot of stuff already. So, uh, um, maybe a little bit on the uh, donations part. Like, if you go to the website, you see there's a little section that Rosa is holding a tip jar. Oh, so, yeah. as we've mentioned, not, uh, we're not getting any sponsors. Everything is done through our own labor, our, our hard work for third year running and also we are supporting charity so if you are feeling um generous consider donating to the convention even 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 a dollar helps you know whatever small amount and uh, if if you can't donate then spread the word uh, let people know that this thing is happening we are having it uh, for the third year but we are not sure what the future will hold um not to be pessimistic, but I don't think we can sustain for for many more conventions. This this could be the last. <laughs> so consider helping us out a bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, donation. Yeah, like the tip jar. Like the tip jar is always fun, you know, if you want to support the con and whatnot. So I'll say this. If you want to go to the con but you can't make it for whatever reason, consider don't consider giving them a tip. Like ten ringgit. Ten dollars, that'll be fun, and yeah, you'll be supporting the con in your own way. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. It's very nice of you to say. <laughs> no problem, man. No problem, man. I said, um, TFP was my first local pony con that I really enjoyed and had fun at, and yeah, I don't mind going again. Like it's one of those places where I feel like I get a chance to meet up with some awesome people there, and since. This yeah. place is going to be much more personal and small. I, I think I can do a round table and talk with people and you know what? Just do stuff. Maybe I'll bring out my laptop and we can do a small review show. Something about ponies or other than ponies, you know, like the Dragon Balls or whatever. No no no. Overwatch. You'll you'll be with me on the table and talk about Overwatch. We do have a little advantage of this venue because it is a co-working space. I'm told that the internet accessibility is like easy. Mm. So, uh, you know, people can bring their laptops, their smartphones, and then just connect to the Wi-Fi over there. Data is not a problem. And they can enjoy playing um, party games together. Yeah, I, I, I don't recommend playing Overwatch. Please don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't play Overwatch at the convention. <laughs> <laughs> party games like uh, you know oh, we'll, we'll let you know later in the future yeah. like we might uh, put something up in the website regarding our pony team party yeah or yeah. you know what if uh, you guys don't have anything and if one of my best buddy best friend uh, Starstream is coming down probably he'll bring his Wii U mm-hmm. and you know what we could play one to switch yeah that'll be that's a fun party game to play Oh, the Switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing is like so versatile. You can bring it anywhere and you can play with friends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one yeah. option there. Like if some... Okay, you know what? It's a call out to you guys out there who have a Switch and who is going to be attending uh, the Friendship Express. If you have a Switch, uh, make sure you... Well, first thing first, make sure it's yours and you keep it safe and bring to the con and play it there with friends. Make new ones, play with them. And enjoy the fun party games. Trust me, I know party games are a lot of fun. I've played Magic the Gathering Commander. It is nuts and fun. You can just have three hours of playing card games and have fun. Uh, for me, I won't be doing that this time around because I want to talk to a lot of people. Yeah, socializing is magic. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, if you have a Switch, bring it down and let's play. Mm. Well... I think we've covered a lot about convention stuff. Um, I have a question for oh, yeah. you, Norman. What do you expect out of the convention? Like, what are your expectations? What do you hope to see? What do you hope to hmm. experience? Well, let's see. Let's this, see. Uh, it's hard for me to say because it's one of those things where I can dream big, but I don't want to. 
So my expectations is I want to see some panelists doing their thing. Like, you know what? I've mentioned before uh, that uh, game show panel there. That's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So I want somebody to pick it up and do it. Because well, I could do it, but I have my own thing I want to do. So yay for someone. You know what? Pick okay. it, pick that idea up and I give it you for free. You don't even have to um, credit me. Just do it. I'll enjoy probably I'll participate and whatnot. Yeah. So uh, do that. And yeah, more panelists, more art, more fun times. That's what I'm expecting. Mm. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Now, what about you, man? It's very fair. What I expect. Ah, the golden rule is everyone has a have a hacking fun time. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully make new friends, of course. Um, and yeah, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. The theme of the convention is uh, wholesomeness, which means like, of sound, body of sound, mind, healthiness. Yes. So I'm hoping that everybody goes in with a healthy mind and a healthy social support and make friends <laughs> with each other. It's a little bit like friendship is magic. Yeah, yeah. The actual themes. Yeah, so basically yeah. it's be like Zenyatta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great <laughs> one. Huh? Oh, people who don't play for voice are going to be confused. <laughs> So, anywho, uh, I think that's it for uh, the con, unless I am forgetting anything. So, we're good? I think we're good. I think we've got everything under cover. Yeah. yeah. And like I mentioned before, if you guys want to catch up with everything that TFE is doing, uh, do follow their Tumblr, their Twitter, their Facebook, their YouTube, and also their Discord. Uh, everything will be in the show notes below. Or in the link at Blue Boop everywhere, like just press that thing and it'll be there. Or even on their website, www.ponycon.my. Easy to remember. Yep, 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 yep. So, anywho, uh, let's head into my favorite topic. And that topic is what have we been doing with our week? So, Doc, have you heard of this before? The, the second? Yes. What have you been doing in your Yeah, yeah. I think I've heard it once or twice uh, at, at some point. So I'll, I didn't know you made it a regular. Oh, it's it is a regular. It's it's fun thing because yeah. Uh, besides money, we like to do other things too, right? So, uh, what essentially we talk about in this segment here is we talk about our week. What have we been doing and whatnot? Um, in your case, it's what uh been a very very long time since you were last on. So, what interesting mm. happened to you from the last time you were here and now? I, I think the last time you were in um, Sarawak, was it? Yeah, I was in East Malaysia for a total of three years uh, working over there. So, I've completed that and uh, the next step, uh, I, I come back and uh, I'm trying to settle down somewhere in Sabanjo. All right, all right. So, I'm... I just recently got back and trying to get things sorted out. Uh, I would be I would be around the KL area for a long time. I would say no plans to move around. All right, nice. So what have you been doing, man? Like besides the moving from one location to another? Oh uh, yeah, of course I thought TFE. That's a that's that's one thing. I mean the website itself took some time to get took a couple of days to get everything right. Uh, if you look at the website, it's uh, actually, okay. Here's the thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, the, I didn't do a line of code for the website. I used one of those um web- website builder thingies, mm-hmm. and it's a bit fun to actually learn how to build a website. And, you know, shortcut your way by not knowing a line of code. Yeah. That that took a while to get done, but it's it's done and done. Uh-huh. And uh, what other things? Of course, I've been playing games. <laughs> what have you been playing, man, besides Overwatch? Like, uh, I know you and me like to play the Overwatch, but besides that, what have you been playing? Besides Overwatch? Yeah. No, it's just Overwatch. Really? Overwatch is live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So really, Overwatch, um, have you been? Have you not been uh, touching other games like um, PUBG or Fortnite or anything like that? We used to play PUBG Mobile but back in uh, back in Kuching when we had a team. It was fun. Like uh, there would be three or four of us uh, going in as a squad, and then uh, usually I don't uh, no, I get the freeloader tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so PUBG was 
um, something which I played uh, back in Sarawak. Uh, that, but the mobile version. Uh, uh, all right, all right. So now it's just <laughs> Overwatch then? Yeah, yeah. Overwatch is like... <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Okay. I, I need to just mention, like, I did not realize the animated shots uh, by Blizzard uh-huh. for Overwatch. It's, it's so... So Pixar, it's so it's good. Yeah, like it felt news out of it, man. Like, oh man, Blizzard is the Pixar of uh, video they've games. They've always been that, what man. The they've always been that. Before, uh, way back in the days, there's two companies that were fighting for best CG, and that was Square Enix with their uh, video and Blizzard with their video. Like, I think what uh, you had War Diablo and uh, Starcraft and also Warcraft oh. back in the days. And you got Final Fantasy yeah. with whatever version they have. I think what eight was the one that made it cool in terms of um, cutscenes. Yeah, now that you mention it, I, I did watch all those stuff. I, I know the Final Fantasy series, and I did watch a little bit of the Starcraft Diablo uh, shot, but I never knew that you know these were good stuff getting better. <laughs> <laughs> it's technology, man. So, have you watched all of the Overwatch, like um, the first one, which was the what was it again? I think um, Winston and Tracer fighting with Reaper and Widowmaker. Yeah, I watched that one. I, I mean, I went to their official YouTube and I clicked on their playlist where they, you know, you go to the next, next one. And then I, I think I got all the animated shots there. Uh-huh. But somehow or another, I felt that the law wasn't complete. <laughs> so uh, looking, looking further, I realized that, oh, Blizzard has got made a lot of, uh, you know, comics. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. There's even an alternate reality game where Sombra hacks the uh, power company and there's so much more in the rabbit hole where you can enjoy your experience, not just as a game, but rather, you know, um, video, in videos and, yeah, and uh, comics, websites. Yeah. And comics. yeah, but the problem with Overwatch in terms of its lore, it's not full, it's not enough. Of course it's not enough. It, they're like dangling a carrot in front of you and like, hey, you want more, you have to... The partners, I have to wait for it. But the problem you know. is, like, it's... honestly, the problem with this is, like, okay, um, way back in the days, Diva was a StarCraft player. She was a pro StarCraft player, but they amended that to become a pro player, a uh, pro gamer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They changed it a yeah. bit. Yeah, and, oh, man, there's a lot of things in between that change in terms of what characters were doing and whatnot. By the way, uh, which was your favorite um, Overwatch short. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, I have to say it was the Bastion one. Really, the Bastion? <laughs> it's like Wally. Yeah, it's like Wally. There were no words, totally silent, just music and uh, visuals, mm-hmm. and they tell the whole story. To be able to tell a story without the use of any dialogue, that is something that only Pixar was able to do. <laughs> and here we have Blizzard. So, you imagine? You know, it's an achievement. Okay. To me, that's 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 a fine work of art, and uh, and and they get props for that. All right, all right. That's that's why I give it. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, for me personally, I would have to say, um, honor. The one with honor, Reinhardt. Uh, Reinhardt. Yeah. The one where he just charges yeah, in and then yeah, uh, yeah. you know live, live with honor, die with blood. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one, that one was fun because. Uh, it shows the growth of Ryan Hart and his personality, where and where he came from, because he was a cocky yeah. guy from the very beginning, and then once his mentor passed on, he took the emblem and well, kind of uh, lived the motto. And I remember that stupid YouTube comment that said that oh, so Ryan Hart was basically every new new tank player <laughs> first joined Overwatch. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in. <laughs> Maybe he will think he's going to charge in solo, right? Yeah, that's not gonna work. Dumb. Overwatch is a team game. You're supposed to go in. As a team. Yeah. And if you're the tank, you're supposed to go yeah. with your teammates. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But I have to say, uh, the latest one, uh, Divas one, I I forgot what it's called. That one was a lot of fun too. Oh, uh, yeah, um, not the Nano Cola one, but the one where she defended uh, her city from, from those robot things, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot of fun, that was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. It's called Shooting Star, that's right, you know. It's a pun on words because uh, a shooting star is something that falls out of the sky, mm-hmm. but yet the shooting star 
she's a she's a star player and she shoots <laughs> in the back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a pun. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But still, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I've seen it, but still, I, I have to say, the Brian Hart one was my favorite. Like I, I like that one a lot. That was good. I I agree. All of them were good. Um, all the animated parts they give you a little bit of a fuzzy feeling after you watch yeah. them. Like, oh my god! I, I did heard. Um, I did heard that Blizzard is considering making a CG animated movie. Movie. I heard that rumor too, but um, that was on social media. I I didn't look at anything past the headlines, so I didn't do my research on yeah, it. Yeah, same here. Uh, to me, it's a rumor. Uh, but if it's a good, a true rumor, then yeah, yeah, I would definitely watch it in theaters. Yeah, man. Like, okay, let let's just break it down. Um, we seen all the shorts, right? If they were putting, okay, if they were dedicated and put a crew on doing a movie for Overwatch, oh boy, that that would be oh boy, great. Yeah. Like, let's just say an hour and forty minutes. Let's just say that. Let's just be generous. Okay, it will be great, but the problem is that who are you going to focus on? Because they're as shots, they are already good on their on their own, and each character has got so much lore in it. So if if you are in charge of the movie, like okay, how the heck am I going to put in all of Overwatch uh, who stuff compacted into uh, a movie? Good segment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, true, true that. Mm-hmm. Um, in all honesty, from the tidbits of lore that we have, we know that. Overwatch is a well, quote unquote, rogue um, organization. They're good guys, but they're not supposed to be there. And then you got Talon. No, no, it was only it was only Blackwatch that was the no, rogue no, no. Section I mean, it's the... after oh. they got shut down. After ah yes, yes, after they got shut down, they were not so they were illegal. They they, they can't operate uh, they can, yeah. normally anymore. So technically, but... they're rogue if they start back. So now, uh, you have ta- you have Overwatch who's kind of a rogue organization and you have Talon which is the bad guy so okay you have Overwatch and mm-hmm. Talon so now here are your good guys and bad guys now you insert mm-hmm. things like the Vus military force you have Zarya's Russian thing mm-hmm. and you have Zen and yeah Zen is a kind of his own thing so like there's a lot of things Shambhali. in between Shambhali. Shambhali. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And then there's also the, the Vishkar Corporation, which uh, Sumetra belongs yeah, to as so well. So there's a lot of things that you could go, man. Like, oh man, now this reminds me. This will be a bad idea. It reminds me of the Street Fighter movie. Remember the animated one? <laughs> <laughs> and that was crap, wasn't it? Oh no, it was good. But it was, uh, the focus was all over what the place. It? Compared to the Van Damme uh, one. Mm-hmm. I like the Van Damme one. Okay. The Van Damme one was fun. Silly, but fun. But... In terms of its story, it suffers the same problem as what we're talking about here right now. They had so many characters to focus on that they couldn't really focus on one thing. So what they did was, hey, uh, let's create a story where Bison is the evil person, he's the dictator of the world, and we focus the story on Guy and Bison and whatnot. Well, technically it was a movie, but it was not that great. So, um, the animated movie okay. was non unfocused. Yeah, one way to make Overwatch successful is you make it a trilogy, like what everybody is doing in these days. So you can have part one, part two, part three, and you can have enough hours to. Talk to but the problem with that is, uh, they're kind of banging on a, well, tr- uh, three movie film kind of thing, where they either they do all three without, uh, caring for financial success. Or they wait for sorry, they wait and see on the success of the first movie. Usually, um, shows like um, uh, the Legend of Narnia did that ever had a second series or whatnot? No, no, it wasn't Narnia. I, I think the Spellbook. Remember. I don't even remember to be honest. Yeah, there's a lot of films that were trilogy, <laughs> but they couldn't really go on because that they didn't have the fun or was not that popular enough. Hmm. I think it's a risk and reward kind of situation where you can do a trilogy, you have the storyline, and if you end it on a cliffhanger and the movie doesn't bring you money, so yeah, you have a crappy movie with a crappy ending. Mm. All right, sure. Yeah, it's one of those ideas. I, I do agree with you. Three movies to make it a perfect story, uh, start, middle, and end kind of deal. 
I mean, I, I kind of pity the director because he's going to be the very stressed out trying to please the fans and, you know, please the movie critics and make the money for the movie. It's going to be a really stressful yeah. job. And also Papa guy. Jeff. <laughs> he needs to make Papa Jeff happy. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hello, I'm Jeff <laughs> from the Overwatch team. Yep. Oh, boy. What? Mercy is going to get nerfed in. Yeah, we're going to nerf Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. So yeah, Overwatch has been uh, your life then. <laughs> Alrighty then, yay. So who are you meaning on Overwatch? Probably Reinhardt at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Reinhardt's fun, man. Uh, I like the new skin, the uh, footballer. <laughs> you know, he, he used the alt, he would say touchdown. Uh, I think that's the best I've ever seen. Uh, touchdown, uh, and then you fall on the ground. <laughs> uh, I, I, I didn't get that one. Uh, unlucky for me. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. You can buy it. Just, you know, wait for the next year event, then you buy yeah, it. Money. Probably, probably. So, let's see. Uh, as, as for me, in my week, um, I've been playing a lot of Magic the Gathering. Um, Magic the Gathering has been fun, especially the format I'm playing where you don't really need to spend a lot of cash. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's been fun. Have you been playing uh, digitally or you played, like, physically? Physically, like, uh, I... <laughs> How do I put this? I, I, I can never see the appeal of playing digital card games because, well, it's a card game. You want the physical copy in your hand. So, fun, right? Yep, fun. So, yeah. And also, um, with physical copies, you can sell it back. Ah, right. So, you get you get, you get your money back. Yeah, like mm. just imagine you buy a booster pack for 13 Malaysian Ringgit and you get a card that's worth $10. Ah, cool. Yeah, and then you sell it back for times three for people or times four to the shop and whatever it is. So you get your money back. So 10 will make you 40. So yeah, You can actually sell it back to the shop. Nah, the shop won't mm-hmm. take it, but players would. That makes yeah. sense. But still, it's one of those cases. So anywho, um, that's been my week. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. So, Doc, where can the good people find you? You can find me. Can I give the Friendship Express Twitter? Sure, sure. The Friendship Express uh, handle is at F-R-N-D-S-H-P-X-P-R-S. So, it's Friendship Express without the vowel. <laughs> Or yeah. easier enough, uh, just link it in the show notes and you can click it to follow it. Yep, that's perfect. <laughs> Anything else? Man? Like, um, I, I think there's more than that. You mean yeah, me? Yeah. Personally or the me? Yeah. I have my own, yes. Uh, DRCXY at Twitter. Alright, so I'll link everything yes. into the show notes so people can follow you and also the con. Awesomeness. Sure, but just to let you know, Norman, that, that account is pretty much not really used. <laughs> <laughs> okay so anyway uh, it exists but I don't really use it yeah <laughs> you need to use it man yeah use it for entering competitions competitions <laughs> yeah, well anywho um, <laughs> and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes YouTube don't forget to press the bell icons to stay up to date and also Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page you can also catch us on com. links are in the show notes also, do subscribe to our review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, where you catch me, Silver Quill, and Sapphire Heart Song review the Pony episodes, comics, and shows and movies. And sometimes we like to divert our resource to other shows. Last time we talked about the Miraculous Ladybug, and we enjoyed it, especially with how insane it could be. And yeah much craziness so if you would like to catch all that uh, links are in the show notes i hope you do subscribe also if you would like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com with every support you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about the thank yous i would like to thank master of lag jeffrey tristan burger cat Charles, Starscream, Lucky Knight, and also Amy. Thank you guys for the awesome support. Stay awesome. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been Charlie. And we'll guys catch you next week or at TFE or even C-Pony Con. And yeah, see you there. 
All right. Bye-bye. See you guys.